This StarCast show, just like all of our StarCast shows, are available at adfreeshows.com. Um, so you guys come back from your final Dragon Gate tour, and then literally one week later, and this was another pivotal moment in your career that happened at PWG that I was lucky enough to be there for. Uh, it was the DDT4 tournament, oh, which yeah. is a one-night, uh, eight or no, 16-team tag team tournament. So all all tag team matches all the way through all night long. And in the second round of the tournament, yeah. the Young Bucks defeated the team of Kenny Omega and Chuck Taylor, the men of low moral fiber, <laughs> to a resounding. Yeah chorus of booze. Yeah. And we were the baby faces. You were. Like up until that career, up until that point, you guys had always been baby faces. Yeah. And then in that one moment, everything it changed. It was crazy, right? And I remember as soon as we got backstage from that, Matt and I had to have another match. So we were like, Super Dragon, we have to be heels now. He's like, nope. <laughs> you gotta He's like, continue. we're light on baby faces. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like, did you hear we're, that? We were like, we are screwed. Yeah. So we, we knew right away we, we were going to get killed during the next match, which was a match that Matt still hasn't watched to this day yeah. because it was like a shoot fight. Brian Danielson versus, or and Roderick Strong Brod versus the Young Bucks. Yeah, Brian and Roddy just mauled you guys. They beat the living hell out of us that night. I've never seen a beating like that before well, in my life. The reason behind it was... They felt and they heard the crowd turning on us, so they felt like if they would beat us up enough, they could turn them back because they'd become sympathetic for us. Yeah. And it wouldn't, they just loved it even more. Right. You, you guys got the shit kicked out of you. And it kept it. going. And yeah. they were like, Brian, I remember Brian kept going, What is going on? Like he would just sit there and kick me 20 times. And it's like they were just cheering everything. And for whatever reason, the fans just decided that they didn't like us anymore. And, and a lot of it was because at the time we were just white meat baby faces who'd come to the ring with our fists up and go, like, we were basically the Rock and Roll Express. Come on, baby! You know, just default wrestler number one and two. Uh, but for about a year, we, had, we got a good run as baby faces because people, I think they felt like, oh, these are our guys. This is the hometown team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, but that, that building, the American Legion Post number 308 in Reseda, yeah. California, has a, has a funny way of, <laughs> that crowd has a funny way of dictating Yes. How I mean, not just matches go, but how careers go. Yeah. And this was that was it. I, I think that that night was the birth of the Young Bucks as we know them today. Finally, we talked Super Dragon. Nalendas just go bad. Uh, even before then, though, I think we even had one more show where we wrestled Human Tornado in El Generico. Yeah, yeah that's right. Two and, skinny black guys. Yes. And they were booing us, and 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 kind of going against what Super Dragon wanted. Nick and I decided, you know what? Let's just try this thing. And the way we walked and the way we talked and moved and delivered moves, it was all different. We had more of an edge. And we brought and up you this. Know, that, was, that was really the first time where I felt an audience that was so hot and so yeah. into what we were doing. Like, that was, we had never gotten a reaction like that yeah. before that. So we were learning on the fly there. You know what I mean? And like, we could tell the course of our career was changing. We yeah. said, instead of trying to go against it, we just went with it. Yes. And yep. then we became full on bad guy, arrogant heels that, and we had a great run at that for a long time there. Yeah, and then literally a week after that night was when you guys debuted in Ring of Honor for the first time. That's right. Wow. That's when things wow. started really picking up. Um, we, I think it was our, no, it was probably the second time we wrestled in the ECW arena because we had done King of Trios. Yeah, yep. uh, but being in ROH was a big deal because at the time, that was, that was still the place. It was the biggest independent company in the world. So going there for us was like, it, it, for one thing, it was work that was constant. So we knew we had so many dates every month. So we were starting to finally not necessarily make a living because money was, it was still, it we was, were still making a hundred bucks a match. It was still a $100 a match. <laughs> but it was, it was helping. We it went was, into Ring of Honor at a hundred dollars a match too. Yep. And there was more exposure because at the time they had the HD net deal the, that Mark Cuban used yes. to on that channel. So more people started to see us. Uh, and it was, it was helping our careers. And uh, we met a lot of good people there, too. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's funny. If you look at the wrestling landscape now yeah. between PWG and Ring of Honor, there's probably, if you look at, you know, just, I mean, even t on Full Gear t you know, tomorrow, there's maybe six guys that you didn't share a locker room with yeah. at one point when you guys were coming it's up. It's pretty crazy. It's full circle. 
everyone around here. Yeah. yeah. You know, that, that, that's the thing, though. Like, you do these shows and you wrestle these guys all over the world and you tear the house down, whether it's at a little bar or a big arena or whatever. It, it gave us the confidence to go, well, if we can have a great match with them over there, why couldn't we do it on a bigger stage? It's like, these guys are proven to be good at this. So that's how we... As I mean, I'm skipping way ahead, but that's how we ended up assembling most of our tag division in our roster. It's from people who we had the chance to, to, to work the little ind independent shows with. And, and I, I think so far it's gone well. So It's gone exceptionally well. And, and thanks for the job, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.